Hey everybody, it's Jill Blanchett with Green Thumb Stampers. It's finally Friday. So what do I got this week? We are going to create our own like masks or stencils using some of our dyes. So hang on and we'll get to it. Today I'm going to show you a neat way to make some backgrounds. You may have seen that we have um, decorative masks in the catalog. We also call them stencils and they're just a nice plastic sheet that has a design in it and I will show you how to use this in a second but what I really wanted to focus on today is how if you don't want to spend the money on the plastic sheets you're not sure or the mask stencil things if you're not sure that you're gonna like them you don't want to spend the money it's not quite the style that you need you can turn to your dies and I've just got a few of the sets here. The Poppy Moments die has one. You want the die that makes the image but doesn't cut it all the way out. So the soft sucks or potted succulents makes a nice die. That's awesome for this technique. Um, the So Many Snowflakes, that just cuts out the um, delicate parts so that you can use that as a mask or stencil as well. So that's what I'm going to show you a little bit about how you can do that. So I have some scrap paper here and my, well, let me start with showing you the mask, okay? So you've got your paper that you want to put your image on and you need to have probably some washi tape would help. The washi just holds everything in place. Uh, sometimes it helps if your paper is bigger than your stencil so that it keeps it from moving, but um, we could just put this down. So this pack, I, I'm pretty sure it's all retired, but I'll, this pack has that flourish. It's got like a leaf background, had some polka dots, and it had um, some trees, which looks like it might have broke. Huh. Interest. Oh no, it's behind. Phew. It's going to sit. And so then it has some trees in there. Um, this is also good. I did a video a while back with the embossing paste. These are awesome for the embossing paste as well. You just want to get them washed off quickly so that the embossing paste does not dry on them. So, so I'm just going to tape that stencil in place. I've got some bumblebee ink and I'm going to run my blending brush around in there. Um, again, you can use a dauber, you can use a sponge, whatever method you like, but I'm starting off the page and then I'm blending onto the paper. You don't want to do it too hard so that you're, um, unless you've taped your uh, stencil down really well. Otherwise, you're going to move the stencil with the paper, uh, off the paper if you go too hard. And, so I'm going to just... Oh, I forgot to start off the paper, so I'm probably going to have a really blobby spot right there. So let's see if I can blend the ink around that would have been on the plastic because you're going to have more to blend with than what you're thinking because it's going to also deposit on this plastic. So you can do as much or as little as you want. I'm going to try and just do like the lower portion and see what I get. If you want an ombre look, then brush it up lighter and it'll get lighter as you go up kind of a thing let's see I'll do that a little bit and see what we got take a peek okay it's coming out it's showing up on there so I will stop and take this off give you a peek of what the stencil looks like so that's what we got I'll turn it sideways in case it's not all fitting in the camera and this is using the stencils. They make beautiful backgrounds, beautiful backgrounds. And um, like I say, if you, it just takes a, a mask of some sort. And so if you don't have a stencil, then you can come in with your dies. You can cut out as long as, like I say, as long as the image stays where the details are cut out but it stays solid on a piece of paper it'll work otherwise if you cut out this flower you're just going to get maybe the fine lines and that would work too I don't have the 
Let's see. If you want just these fine lines, like this flower here or this one, and you're just going to get those fine lines, you could do that and, and then do the whole page. And then when you picked it up, the outline of that flower would be on here without any ink underneath of it. That would be cute too. But these are what I'm going to show you. And just a quick, so we've got, uh, let's see where we're going to, let me say this will be our a card and we are going to want to put that in the lower portion of the card. Here's my washi. Let's tape that down and I am going to try and tape it on the card and this time a little bit to keep it from moving. Now these are going to be a little more delicate because they are made from your paper. So use your heavyweight paper and be very careful when you uh, if you have to use the you pick brush, pick tool brush to get the um, pieces out because it will rip. I ripped it right there. So we will see how this is going to end up. So I'm inking up my brush. I'm going to start off the page and I'm going to come on. And again, how much ever darkness or lightness you want. Now this one isn't necessarily going to have the extra ink to push around because it is paper so the it's soaking it up pretty good so you're gonna have to like re-ink and I should have started off a little better oh man my whole corner is not gonna have anything in it I should have went over further but this will work I kind of want a little bit of an ombre look there let's see what we got that works good so I'm gonna stop take it off and then you've got a cool design so but what I'm gonna do is I didn't get enough down there in that corner so let's just put another little flower down there I wasn't anticipating that giant dead space so you can move it over here and put another one if you want you can move it all over that's the beauty of your little homemade stencil there so that's what that one would kind of look like for you. Then you could go through with the rest of your card, um, cut some of the actual flowers out, and put those on there. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've got the snowflake I'm going to show you real quick, just to show you what, what that would do. Oh, this one's about the same size. And I am going to try and put that right in the middle of my card, so... And I made them pretty much both the same size. So, okay, let's get some more tape. If you don't use washi tape on your cards, it does come in handy for things like this. Keeping your dies in place when you die cut or keeping things flat on your surface when you need them. So... I am now going to switch over to a brush that I have blue in. The Stampin' Up! blending brushes are awesome. They were sold out quickly, and I had to resort to something else because I only got one set of them. So I've got something else here this time. Um, they kind of all work the same. If you got a makeup brush, if you can't uh, get the Stampin' Up! brushes, they are awesome. But I understand that, you know, not everybody wants everything. So I'm going to put a little more blue. Kind of want to put some extra around the darkness. See if I can get some darker tips on those snowflakes out there. Starting off the page a little bit. So there's our blue Pacific Point snowflake see what we got is it dark enough you can kind of lift it up and take a peek if you wanted it darker in areas or something you can put it back down just make sure that it's you know even because my bottom piece was not taped down but you should be able to see the shadow and say yep that's lined up tape it back down and then go ahead with what you were doing but there's the snowflake. See how pretty that is? You can, you could actually even go uh, leave it on there and 
we could have done another color over the top of the blue or in addition to the blue I should say um, just to give it a variegated look or something there's a bajillion different things you can do but there's a snowflake and how that would look and then my favorite is the succulents dye look at look at that beauty and I will tell you that this one is going to be really delicate because of all those lines so we're going to I think on this one if you're going to do this something like this definitely have a larger piece of paper than what you need I again cut it the card size to so I could take it right from here to my card but I think definitely start with a larger base that you're going to use on the card and then cut it down after you've done your stenciling oops I'm not looks like I'm crooked and then you've you've got much better chances of getting a nice clean image but I'm gonna glue that or tape that down like so and see what we get I've got um, again I got a different kind of blending brush because this one the bristles are way um, softer than my Stampin' Up brushes so they're gonna have a lot more um, give to them. Highly recommend the stamping blending brushes from Stampin' Up, but again, understood. So just starting off the page and working my way on like so. Can make it darker, lighter, but this is, it's the whole I'm just taking my time a little bit more on this guy because these are some very fine image cutouts. So I don't know if I taped that one too low for the camera. I can't see now. And this is what we're going to do. So I'm just going to finish this up kind of right here. I'm using a new, the new succulent, uh, soft succulent color and it's really pretty green I'll show you when I take this up so we'll call this good let me see if I can get this corner a little bit better I got uh, I laid it pretty heavy right there in the corner so I'll try and blend that out a little bit before I lift the paper the um, like I said this blending brush is a lot finer bristles so it does smash down quickly and easier than the other and what else I can do is try and zhuzh up these other corners a little bit heavier to match match that and see if that it's gonna help but not knowing what it looks like I might be doing all this for nothing so my in, inner center here is not very dark I can see that but let's peel it up a little bit, take a peek, see what we got. I think that looks pretty darn good. You can also use this piece that we just used as our stencil too. Take our tape off. Carefully though, because I just ripped my paper. But if you take your tape off carefully, you can go in and... Just, you could go over your spots here until they were as dark as the rest. You could try and cut that off somewhat. All kinds of stuff you could do if you really want to use it. You can darken those up so that it's not obvious that there was tape there. Like so. And then you could use that, that on a card as well. How pretty would that be? So you got two uses out of that stencil. And here's what we came up with. So, again, I think if we start with a larger piece, we're better off. And then come in and trim it down. Now this is going to be, this piece should be five and a quarter by four. Oh, nope, I left it the whole mat size. So I am ready. So this, is five and a, so this is ready to cut down to five and a quarter. I'm mistaken. So now I can cut that down and use that 
as a background for one of my card fronts. So that's it, guys. Just wanted to show you the beauty of using some of the dies in the uh, die sets from our catalog for masks if you didn't have a mask or you needed a different kind of mask than what we have. So there you have it. A great way to create your own stencils. You can have an endless possibilities of fun things to do to your backgrounds by just using your dies. So have a great week. Um, and Well, enjoy the weekend. It's not quite have a great week yet. So enjoy the weekend, then have a great week, and I will be back next Friday for another version of Finally Friday. Until then, take care, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.